Good day and welcome to the presentation of Lasta 4D Photo View, photometric data management at uh, 360 degrees. The core of photometric management. Lasta 4D Photo View is the program module out of the five that make up Lasta 4D dedicated to the management of luminary and lamp photometries able to satisfy all the requests in the elaboration of photometric data at 360 degrees. To whom it is aimed? Lifestyle 4D PhotoView is aimed at the following sectors, manufacturing companies and, in particular, technical offices in the development of products graphic designers for the preparation of catalogs and technical documentation, marketing offices to supply designers in the market the photometric data they need, webmasters for the visualization of photometries on the company site at the disposal of those who design in the market. At the end, the designer in the market for the analysis of the photometric data supplied by the company. The macro functions. Lifestyle 4D photo view is made up of a series of five macro functions. Management of the photometric metrics. To manage all the intensity and luminary characteristics data together with the measurement. Elaboration of the photometric metrics. To elaborate the metrics data in graphs and tables according to the international standards. Export and printing to save or print the photometries in different formats. And uh, two last macro functions. The back functions to elaborate a great number of uh, photometric uh, charts under the form of both graphs and tables in a completely automatic way. Customize the function to meet the different needs of every single company in the customized management of photometric data. Let's see now into details uh, the different uh, macro functions. And let's start with the management of the photometric matrix. The functions that allow the management of the photometric matrix are function for the input of characteristic data, luminar measurement name and code, lamps, laboratory data, for example, etc function for the input of the data in the photometric matrix, operational functions for the modification of the matrix, functions like normalization, symmetrization, etc. Uh, I'd like to add that PhotoView allows to insert all useful data and further successive conversion and save them in OXL format. What does it mean? It means uh, that uh, with the photo view, it is possible to input uh, all the necessary data. And uh, after that, it is possible to export to any format. For example, if we have an IS, there are some uh, fields uh, which are not available at the ulumdat file, and vice versa, for example. With uh, our program, it is possible to input uh, all the needed information and then when you export the program will automatically select the one of them, the one uh, to be used for the IS file and uh, on the other hand uh, the ones that to be used for the ulumdat files. What is really important is that uh, all the information can be input uh, through the photo view and then exported uh, to these uh, formats uh, for example. And all the information are stored in uh, a new format uh, the format that we called OXL format, which is an XML based uh, file format, including not only photometric uh, information, but also all the information related uh, to the luminary, like uh, images, like uh, the 3D of the luminary, like uh, uh, data sheets, etc.
Let's come now to the second macro functions. Data elaboration. The elaboration functions allow to elaborate numeric data in tables and graphs and they cover polar and Cartesian graphs, a visualization of the photometric volume in 3D, beam opening diagrams, isolux, isocandela and luminous curves, output curves and tables, international classifications, UGR and utilization factors tables, which means that uh, through the photo view it is possible to have a full set of uh, graphs and tables to manage uh, all uh, you need with uh, your photometries. The export and saving functions. Lifestyle for the photo view also includes a series of export and saving functions of photometric graphs and tables. For instance, saving of graphs in raster formats such as BMP, TGA, JPG, P PCX and PNG, which means that the raster formats is capable of uh, storing into a file of, let's say, these formats all the different pixels uh, characterizing the image you can have at the monitor. In this case, uh, the raster format is quite limited because it is then not so easy to modify, for example, the character, to modify the color of the character, and it has to be done one by one or deleted and rewritten, which is quite a long process in case you have to use uh, the image for, for example, your paper catalogs. In this case, it is much better to use the graph export in vector formats such as the XF, EPS and PS. It means that we export to a vector format and this format is, is used by many of the publishing programs and allows also a very easy way to modify the characters, to modify the uh, color of the lines, for example, the color of the, the characters. Uh, you can also modify the font. So it is uh, a much a freer way to manage uh, uh, graphs uh, than the raster formats. Conversion of uh, photometries from a specific uh, text uh, format to a different one. For example, it is possible with the program to import an LDT file and to export it to an IS file, or to import an IS uh, and export to LTLI, or to uh, import an LDT file and export to ATM14, which is the British uh, standard, or to import an LDT file and export to OXL. So we have a huge set of combinations that can be selected in function of the different needs. In this case, it is necessary to say that all operations are limited to a single item at the time. So it is possible to drag and drop into the photo view a single photometry and then select the photometry and select then file save as and save the file to the format, to the uh, needed uh, format. It is not possible to manage with this function at the same time a huge set of, uh, a huge number of uh, photometric data at the same time, which is possible with the batch functions. The batch functions are very useful in the management of a large number of uh, photometric data that are to be automatically converted in graphs or tables chosen by the user. These functions can be used, for instance, to convert the several photometric files at the same time for, from one format to a different one, so from the OXL to the IS, or from the OXL to the LDT, or from the LDT to uh, IS. So, and satisfy all the different needs. Graphs uh, and diagrams in vector or raster files. Values at table in text formats, for example. At the end, we come to the last micro function, the customized functions. 
The customize functions allow the elaboration of graphs and tables in the formats chosen by the companies such as the creation of elements made up of several standard graphs and tables. Doing so in such a way that they respect the image of the company in terms of color, font, layout, etc. In this case, we have an example. Uh, the polar diagram and the beam diagram can, are managed by the program separately. But in this case, uh, one customer asked if it was possible to put them together in, in a single layout, like you can see here. And uh, they also define exactly the font to be used, the dimension of the character, and uh, the dimension of the single grid. So any point was uh, fully defined by the customer. In this case, uh, it is possible to export this image at the end to a vectorial format and this file at the end in a PS format, for example, can be used directly by the people managing the paper catalog, for example, and they simply open the file and they put it into the publishing program. Uh, in case, uh, but this is not the case uh, because uh, the character font uh, was already defined, they can also modify the character, they can also modify the font, uh, they can uh, modify uh, all what they really need. It's obvious that uh, being uh, already defined um, and coming from uh, a customized program, it is uh, uh, quite uh, un unuseful to modify anything else because it is already coming configured in the way requested by the manufacturer. This is, a, this is only one example but uh, we have uh, uh, already developed many uh, customized uh, visualizations like this one and uh, they are all different one from the other because uh, all the manufacturers are different one from the other. But what are the advantages uh, of uh, using such a customized, uh, such customized functions? The customized functions offer a series of remarkable advantages, mainly in terms of uh, time saving, particularly if used together with the batch functions. So let's consider that we have uh, a huge number of uh, photometric files and uh, we want to convert them into this layout. If you do it uh, one by one, uh, doing uh, drag and drop uh, file export uh, this one to EPS format, uh, it takes a huge amount of time. If we have, for example, a thousand of uh, photometric files, but uh, using the customized functions together with the batch functions, it is possible to select uh, a group of uh, files uh, and to say, I want to export uh, these uh, photometric files uh, into this layout in EPS format and the program one by one will do the job for you. We discussed how much time the customer saved in this way and the answer that from three weeks of work to only four hours to prepare the graphs and tables for our paper catalog. It means that they saved a huge, a huge amount of time. Then, elimination of errors in the development, of, in the development phase, re-elaboration re of data before the customer had to redraw the polar curve, uh, re-input uh, all the values, and when you type, uh, you can also make uh, errors. So it takes time to check, and many times uh, you miss the correction. So the data published at the catalog uh, could be wrong. In this way, it is the program that is managing automatically the conversion and the creation of this layout, uh, so no error is coming through the process. Automatic management of the corporate image. If uh, you decide that this is your image to publish a photometric data, it is absolutely coming out uh, in the way you want. The version of uh, Lystar 4D PhotoView. 
PhotoView is available in several different versions. There are some modules available with the open versions, the program you can download uh, from uh, our website. It includes matrix management, polar and Cartesian diagrams, UGR and utilization factors uh, tables, Solner's diagram. Then we have the pro version, which is the professional version, and it includes, uh, in addition to the functions in the open version, the standard batch functions. We are going to demonstrate to you how to manage the standard batch functions in short time. Then we have a plus version, including, in addition to the functions already present in the open and pro versions, the photometric solid in 3D, the bin diagrams, the international photometric classification, the isolux and isocandela curves, the luminance curves, the SRH are graphs and tables, which is the spacing to eight ratio graphs and tables uh, used by the people working in emergency lighting. And then the possibility of introducing customizations. So the customization is only possible when we come to the plus version. The norms. LiStar 4D PhotoView is developed according to the most updated norms and uh, recommendations for the management of both conventional and uh, LED luminary photometries. Uh, we have here two different groups of standards. The standards for luminary photometric measurement section and uh, here we have the list uh, of uh, standards used by uh, PhotoView. So we have uh, the CIE 43 for the photometry of uh, flute lights, then the CIE uh, 121, 127, the European norm for photometric measurements, like the EN 13032, the American, the IS LM79, the famous LM79, the RP8, the TM14 for the visualization of the uh, photometry classification, following uh, the IS standard, and the UNI 11356, which is the Italian norm for the photometry of uh, LED luminaires. Uh, why? Because uh, the European, the EN standard, is not yet available, and it will be available uh, in short time. Data elaboration section, such as uh, CIE 102, LM63 from the IS, TM14 from the SIPSI, the British uh, SIPSI, and ULUMDAT. These are standards for the uh, creation of photometric uh, data transfer photometric files. Uh, let's say that uh, it, it is not proper to say that the ULUMDAT is a, a standard, which means that, that there is no standard public standard for the ULM data, but it is a standard de facto. It is a standard because it was uh, uh, the first uh, uh, photometric file format introduced uh, during the 80s uh, uh, by engineer Stockmar from Germany. And it, il, it is uh, still now a very well used uh, and widely used uh, format by most of the programs available in the market. Let's come now to a demonstration of the different features characterizing PhotoView. Okay. This is PhotoView. Let's reduce it because uh, I'd like uh, to explain you how to import the photometric files into PhotoView. So it is possible to do it uh, using, for example, Ulm that uh, photometries uh, available in external folder. We simply drag and drop the photometry from the external folder to the PhotoView. 
old data will be automatically uploaded here and from here we can start uh, to manage the photometry but this is not the only way it is also possible to select the file open select uh, where we loaded the, the photometries and see program database this data sample files uh, which is uh, absolutely the same we select uh, this one and we open the photometry there are two other ways of uh, opening uh, photometries. One is uh, through the Liswin, the catalog of the program. So we select uh, the manufacturer of interest and uh, from here we simply press uh, PV for a view and the photometry will be automatically open at the photo view. It is then possible to do something else directly from the internet. So for example, we are at this manufacturer. This manufacturer has a web catalog of their own. It is then possible to press WG and the program will automatically open the list of available uh, uh, luminaires and uh, from here I can uh, for example input uh, some data in order to filter the luminaires I select the luminaire of interest so let's say this one for example and uh, from here I drag and drop into the list win and after a few seconds the photometry will be automatically available at my local database and uh, from here I can uh, press uh, PV and open the photometry at the photo view. Uh, it is not yet possible to do to do it uh, directly from the internet uh, into the photo view. It is necessary to use to use uh, this uh, bridge module the Liswin in order to download the file and then uh, open it uh, at the photo view. Uh, while, uh, for example, it is already possible with the LightCalc, uh, the calculation uh, module, the design module, with which I can simply drag and drop it directly at the working plane. So the photometry was downloaded uh, and I can start now defining uh, my room uh, and uh, run my design process. Okay, so uh, it will take uh, a while uh, to complete uh, also with the photo view the drag and drop uh, option. Okay, once the photometry is uh, available at the photo view it is possible to manage it so we can manage uh, the different uh, information so for example we can start uh, from here and uh, we want to change uh, the code we can uh, input the new code we can change the name so we can uh, modify all the information available here and uh, once we have finished to define all the information it is possible to pass to the table and uh, manage the table through the different uh, features uh, we have here so it is necessary to select uh, edit and then from here it is possible to for example let's say that uh, we get a file coming from uh, the Ghani photometer uh, this is also for example if uh, uh, it is a Gonio photometer of um, Oxitec. It is possible to drag and drop uh, into the photo view the format, the file format coming from our Gonio photometers. Uh, in, this, uh, in this case, when you open a file coming from a, a Gonio photometer, uh, usually the value at uh, gamma zero are not the same, even though the theory says that uh, they must be the same. So in this case uh, we have to normalize uh, the photometry 
So for example, if we double click here and we say that we have uh, 150, we can say that uh, we have to normalize uh, to the C0, for example, we select a, plane, a reference plane and uh, the program will automatically recalculate uh, the photometry in order to have uh, the same value over here. Usually the normalization, just to add a few words, it is possible when the differences that you have here are very limited because they may come from uh, a wrong uh, positioning of the luminar at the goniophotometer. Uh, if uh, the differences are very huge, let's say, let's say more than 5%, uh, it is quite uh, mm, not suggestible to apply the normalization. It is much better to run again uh, the photometry at the goniophotometer. Okay, so there are different uh, features here, like the symmetrization. So, for example, if we have uh, uh, a photometry like this, uh, give me a second and I upload uh, a new one. So, a photometry from uh, a road uh, luminaire. You may have that uh, once you run the photometry and once you import uh, the file in, in photo view, you will see that uh, even though the luminary is considered symmetric, the photometry is not symmetric because uh, it is quite uh, uh, impossible in reality that you have a perfect, 100% perfect uh, symmetry. So in this case, uh, it is possible to select uh, the symmetrize uh, to function and uh, the right part uh, excuse me, the left part uh, will be symmetrized uh, and made equal to the right part. This is uh, usually done for photometrists to publish at the uh, paper catalog or uh, in general for photometrists to be published also at the, at the web because it is uh, much nicer to present uh, a very neat uh, photometry in place of uh, presenting a photometry with many asymmetries even though there, there aren't uh, those asymmetries. Uh, like uh, I had a chance to say before, this is uh, possible and suggestible when the differences are very limited. If uh, the differences are huge, uh, this is not suggestible because uh, the changes applied to the photometry will be very big uh, and the photometry won't correspond then uh, the calculation with the reality. Okay, so let's pass now to the second level of the macro functions. Once we have the photometry, it is possible to convert uh, the photometry into polar diagrams into Cartesian diagrams, into photometric solid. So this is uh, the 3D, the volume of the photometry. And it is very useful when uh, you are designing a luminaire because uh, with a simple view, you have the perfect idea of how the photometry is uh, working. And so you have to also define where to work in order to improve uh, your photometry because uh, it is a uh, much much, much more difficult if you analyze uh, the values uh, from here. It is difficult to have a sight, uh, a very quick uh, sight view of uh, how the photometry is working, just analyzing the values. But also if you analyze the polar diagram, it is the same. You should uh, visualize uh, all the different uh, planes, uh, for example. So when you come uh, <coughs> in here, Uh, you have to visualize all the, the different uh, half planes and it will be difficult to, to understand. So with the 3D, uh, with the 3D photometric solid, it is possible to have a, a quick view of about how the photometry is working. Then the beam diagram in uh, 3D uh, format or in uh, 2D following uh, this section or following this other 
a perpendicular section with uh, all the values, uh, the height, the diameter at the different uh, height, the maximum lux value at uh, zero, and the average uh, lux at uh, the different uh, uh, sections. Then, the classification, another very important uh, section because it gives you the classification of the photometry. So, in here we have, uh, for example, the German, the DIN classification, and it gives you a very simple uh, uh, evidence of about how the photometry is working. Saying A, for example, in this classification, it means that uh, it is a photometry only uh, downward, and 30, it is uh, corresponding to how the beam is uh, widespread. Then we have uh, the French classification, the BZ classification from uh, uh, the UK or from Belgium, they are using the same one, and the CIE which is not very used, like the CIE flux code, only the efficiency is, uh, is considered. Uh, the CIE classification didn't have a, a, a big success. Then we have all the other parameters seeing how the photometry is working. Also like the zonal flux diagram, which in this case is saying that within, uh, uh, from 0 to 75 degrees, we have almost the full photometry. Then, the UGR table. From the matrix, the program converted the values into the UGR table, which is the way now uh, we consider the uh, glare, how the, the luminaire is working, and how is the glare of the luminaire. Then we have the isolux curves, usually used for, uh, mostly for uh, outdoor lighting. In this case, uh, we have exactly the, uh, the corresponding, uh, because in this case, uh, the photometry, the luminaire is uh, in here, and uh, this asymmetric, uh, this asymmetry is, uh, is uh, this one, while on both sides, we have uh, a perfect uh, symmetry we can see from here. Then, uh, the same photometry can also be visualized through the isocandelas, uh, uh, isocandela diagrams in uh, different uh, projections, uh, the orthographic, uh, the, the equal area, the stereographic, uh, the sinusoidal, and the Cartesian, for example. So, different ways of uh, visualizing the photometry. This is quite uh, useful in order to project uh, the photometry on a sphere. And it gives you some important parameters like the spread, uh, in this case uh, for I wrote uh, lighting luminaires, and the throw. These are data very useful for the people uh, working in uh, road lighting, for example. And it is also possible to analyze the photometry when we tilt uh, the luminaire from zero, in this case, to 17 degrees, but it is also possible to visualize the photometry from uh, different, uh, different angles. So it is quite uh, uh, very useful uh, diagrams, uh, this one. Then we have the road classification. In this case, uh, it gives you the idea of, of how much light is uh, on the pavement and how much light is going to the road in case of uh, zero tilting angle. But uh, if we improve uh, the angle to 72, there won't be light uh, on the pavement, but only light uh, in front of the luminaire. But usually this is not uh, a very used uh, tilting angle. Okay. And uh, from here, we have also all the parameters from different uh, standards relating for example related for example to the uh, light pollution to the glare index uh, the luminous intensity class uh, these are coming from the EN 13032 uh, standard 
these are coming from uh, the IS and from the CIE classifications. Then uh, we have uh, the American uh, classification for uh, road lighting luminaires. Uh, in this case, it is quite uh, a very interesting classification because at the end it is uh, summarized how the luminary is spreading the light uh, into the different cones and uh, we come at the end uh, to a very simple, uh, uh, to three very simple parameters, the so-called BUG, and here we have a luminary with uh, B2, U0 and G1. This is very useful because in the states uh, it is now possible to select the luminary not only from uh, the lamp power, not only from the luminar type, etc., but uh, it is uh, suggested to select a luminary from the BUG classification. Utilization factors. These factors were very used in the past, but uh, with the uh, coming of the uh, computers, they were replaced because uh, these utilization factors were used uh, to easily calculate uh, by hand how many luminaries to be installed in a in a in a room. It's obvious that uh, now all the calculations are done uh, through the programs, and they are much much faster, even in uh, very complex uh, configurations. So we left uh, this uh, uh, this table because uh, someone is uh, still uh, using this table. But uh, I think that then in the future it would be removed because uh, it would be out of date. Also the Solner, we left it because uh, there are some uh, uh, places in the world where this uh, diagram is uh, still used, even though it is uh, more and more replaced by the UGR table. Then uh, it is also possible to elaborate uh, the photometry into luminance curve uh, uh, curves uh, you can see you can see here and at the end uh, it is possible to have the SHR diagram for emergency lighting. This gives you the idea of uh, the interdistance uh, you should uh, have uh, in order to have the proper lighting, uh, the proper lighting uh, when you have uh, two consecutive uh, luminaires. Okay, we have finished the second section. Once uh, you have uh, the for example, the polar diagram, it is possible to export or to save, uh, in this case, uh, the image, but uh, it is uh, pretty the same for the, for the tables. It is possible to save uh, <coughs> the image into different uh, formats. So, in this case, uh, it is possible, for example, to select uh, Save Image. We select uh, the format. In this case, we are saving uh, our photometry, our polar diagram into raster format, into a raster format. And uh, once we have um, defined the format, uh, we press uh, uh, go, and the photometry will be, the polar diagram will be saved uh, to the folder. Then, it is also possible, in this case, uh, to save a photometry in uh, 3D DXF. So, it is, uh, the program is uh, saving a DXF, uh, exactly the 3D, the volume of uh, the photometry, you can then open, for example, in another CAD uh, system. If you have a program with which you can analyze a 3D uh, through another program. And then, it is uh, possible, uh, we have to go back to the polar diagram, it is possible to save the photometry as a postscript file. So, we selected uh, the feature, now we select uh, the format, we have two formats, the PS, the postscript simple format, for example, and the encapsulated postscript <coughs> with the extension EPS. Usually, 
the most used uh, is the EPS uh, format. Uh, we select uh, EPS, uh, we save, uh, and the photometry is uh, directly, the, uh, the polar diagram is directly converted into a uh, EPS uh, file format. But it is also possible uh, to, if uh, we come to a table, it is possible to save the table into a text file. So we select uh, save the text file, it will be a txt file, we confirm and the table will be saved. So there is a really a huge uh, uh, amount of possibilities uh, to manage uh, the photometry and uh, you can understand why we say that uh, it is uh, 360 degrees uh, for a view because uh, it is uh, really uh, in the position to satisfy all your needs. Let's come now to the bench uh, features. So we have two different levels. One level is available through the, uh, even through the open version. In this case, uh, you have uh, a window and uh, the program is uh, managing the database the old database of the previous uh, of the previous version there are many customers uh, in the world now using uh, the photo win so we said uh, let's use uh, the uh, the batch option let's open the database and let's convert for example the photometry is available through the Photom FDB database into, for example, the new format, the, the OXL. So in this case, it is simply necessary to select the folder, for example, in this case, we select IDEA, we right click, run batch, and if I confirm all these photometries will be converted from the PhotomFDB database into the OXL format. But it is also possible to do the same if we want to convert the same photometries we have here into a polar diagram in PNG format or EPS format. So all the photometries, once we select run batch will be converted uh, into polar diagram in the PNG format. So this is uh, the base batch option. But uh, it is also available a what we call a customized batch option. So for example, in this case uh, if we select the file uh, batch there will be there will be a, a window coming. In this case, uh, the customer was asking to do something like this. We have a list of uh, photometries available and uh, we want to automatically convert uh, all those uh, photometries into different uh, file formats so that uh, we work uh, starting from uh, a limited set of photometries uh, and in case the extrapolation is possible we can create uh, a huge number of photometries uh, automatically. So this is the case uh, for example when you have uh, some luminaries uh, using uh, the same uh, exactly the same reflector for example. So from the optical point of view the behavior of the luminary is exactly the same but at the end uh, the codes managed by the catalog are many more. So it is not the case to do it manually. In this case we have to load the, the batch, we have to load the, the list and uh, just uh, to uh, show you in this case uh, we have uh, uh, the original file name, the new file name the manufacturer name, how we want to call uh, the file, uh, how we want to call the luminary, the, the 
photometric measurement, how we want to call the luminary. Uh, it, we can also change the code of the product. Uh, we can change the code of the lamp. For example, this is very useful if uh, you have to send the photometries to the United States. Uh, there are some, some lamps not used in, uh, in Europe. So it is nice to have a photometric files uh, using exactly the lamps used uh, in the United States, etc. So, in this case, uh, the, the batch option, this customized uh, batch option, will create from three files, uh, excuse me, we create from a single file we have uh, probably here, from this one, we create uh, automatically three folders and uh, at any folder there will be three files all coming from the same photometry so the program is working it's almost uh, done so finished in here the program created the automatically the folder ISNA Europe European uh, uh, um, reference, the same files uh, in the American reference system and the LDT. So from one file we created the three folders with the three different files inside. So for a total of uh, nine files. And it was done automatically by the program. It's clear that it is not the case uh, to consider a, a heavy work uh, if you do something like this. But uh, you have to consider that uh, in case we have a huge amount of uh, photometries, let's say a thousand of photometries, doing that uh, through a batch uh, option like this one, it is really saving a lot of time and uh, it is uh, really very helpful because uh, it is uh, error free unless uh, you make an error in creating the Excel file. Okay, let's come now to the last uh, feature. The customized uh, feature, the customized uh, functions. In this case, uh, we have here the same example like we had a chance to see through the presentation. We have uh, a polar diagram, we have uh, the beam diagram in one section, the beam diagram in the other section. So this one is corresponding to the red line, this one is corresponding to the uh, blue line. At this stage uh, it is possible to do exactly what we did uh, before. So it is possible to export, uh, for example, to EPS over here. And then catch the file and put it uh, at uh, the program where I am managing, for example, the paper catalog. Uh, that's it.